In the old days, ranchers used the sound of the whip to move cattle. Today, collectors buy different types as functional works of art, while others practice the sport of whip cracking, training to compete in competitions. There are even entertainers who perform eye-popping tricks with whips. In the world of whip cracking, the best whips are made of kangaroo leather because it's ten times stronger than cowhide of equal thickness. Modern whips have four main parts. The handle, the thong, which is the flexible braided portion, the fall, a replaceable strip of leather, and the cracker, the thin string which amplifies the sound of the crack. After carefully selecting the hide to be used for the specific whip, they begin by trimming away the ragged edges of the kangaroo hide with a razor-sharp knife. This leaves a smooth edge with which to work. They now begin cutting out all the whip's leather components, most of which have strands which they'll later braid. The internal construction of the whip is made of two layers of braiding called plaited bellies. Separating each braided layer is a solid piece of leather called a bolster. It encircles the braided belly layer under it. Then, covering everything, is a final outer layer of braiding called the overlay. They cut the strands for the bellies and overlay by hand, using a tapering cutter that's specially designed for whip making. The finished overlay and bellies have a flat portion at the top called the yoke, and strands tapering continuously along their entire length. They stretch each strand as much as possible to ensure the braid will be tight and uniform. Then they resize each strand and bevel its edges. This helps the strands fit into each other snugly and create a smoother, gapless braid. Using a tool called a hand splitter, they shave the backside of each strand to a uniform thickness. This prevents lumps in the taper of the finished whip. Next, they take waxed cord and tightly bind a tapered strip of leather around a handle foundation. The leather strip, called the core, will extend into the center of the thong. They attach the first belly yoke over the handle and core, then braid the strands to begin forming the thong. This compresses the core into a solid round center. Over the braided first belly, they wrap the first bolster and attach and braid the second belly. Over that, they wrap the second bolster, each layer compressing the ones underneath. Then at last, the final layer, the overlay. First, they lubricate the strands with homemade animal fat-based soap. This not only enables a tighter braid, the animal fat also conditions the leather. This particular whip has a 12-strand overlay, but more intricate overlays can have as many as 72 strands, forming complex patterns. While braiding, it's critical to seat and align the inner layers and pull the strands tightly. When the thong reaches the finished length, they feed the end of the braiding through a slit in the next part of the whip, the fall. They tie the remaining strands in sequence around the fall using what's known as a half hitch knot. Then they seat the fall into place and trim the loose strands. This creates a secure connection between these two sections of the whip. Now they roll the thong between a hard surface and a block of marble. This compacts the braiding and rounds out the overall shape. Then they tie the cracker onto the tip of the fall. In the old days, they used horse hair for the cracker, also known as the popper. Nowadays, whip makers are more likely to use nylon string. They wrap a piece of leather to build a knot foundation at the base of the handle. For longer and thicker whips, they form the knot foundation with a piece of lead to properly balance the whip. They fold the yoke from the overlay over the foundation, then, with a separate strand of leather, cover the foundation with what's known as a Turk's head knot. After trimming the knot strands, they shape the knot with a soft mallet, then more rolling. Lastly, they apply a coat of natural shellac to the entire whip. This protects the materials and produces a nice sheen. No whip leaves the shop without a round of hands-on testing to make absolutely sure it's all it's cracked up to be.